Okay, I've worked in four countries, India, in Hong Kong, in Jakarta, and in New Zealand, okay? Now, if you look at the universal goals of parents who send their children to school or of education, you, everyone will tell you that they want their children to be good human beings. So people are basically looking for character building. You're looking for empathy. You're looking for resilience. You're looking for problem solving. Uh, for risk taking. You want children of metal who will be good citizens of their countries and be global citizens for the world. This is what your general aim of education is. And that does not change from country to country. What changes is the culture. So uh, countries are culturally different. They have different aspirations. They have different problems. And their needs are different. Their requirements are different. So taking a system from one country and imposing it on another rarely works. And you'll also find that in a lot of uh, schools in India where you've just taken on a system and you've not really bridged the philosophy of education or the way in which people think in that particular country. If you just moved systems, then you'll find that there is a lot of failure, there's confusion. So I wouldn't advocate moving a system from anywhere in the world into your country. However, if you look at my experiences, when I was in Hong Kong, uh, the British, it was a British colony, and you found that the kind of um, programs that they developed in uh, England, for example, was actually put on this colony, and they had some amazing curriculums. So over two years, you found that students who had very um, facile goals or superficial lives because of education moved a, in a very big way in just two years. And what did they do? They connected locally and they connected globally. These are two things that you did with any kind of topic that you had. So whether you were teaching Shakespeare, who was always our contemporary, and so you looked at local, you looked at global, you looked at history, you looked at how people uh, relationships were in maybe in the Stone Age and how they are going to be in the future and you found a certain thread of universality. Now this kind of education broadens your mind because you stop looking at everything in a narrow perspective. So I think Hong Kong taught me that and th that's something that I value in education where there must be a certain broad vision for the child, for the child to happen, not so much as what other people think. When I moved to New Zealand, I did gifted education. And gifted education is extremely child-centered because you're looking at children as individuals who have very special needs. And therefore, I realized what it is to break away from this teacher-directed education that you normally have and to start putting the child at the center to do discussions and to do debates and to get him to explore and get him to present and start looking at things from his perspective. So everything need not be perfect. So lots of what, you, what we do is imperfect, but it's the process that's important. So understanding that process and as vis um, versus goals, I think was an important uh, kind of education that I got from uh, New Zealand. And that is something that I would definitely want to bring into to India. The last uh, stop that I had, besides, of course, doing work in India before I went and, and after, was at Jakarta with the Australian International School. The Australian International School had a set of outcomes from the government, and the teacher designed the program. So there was freedom to choose the kind of books you wanted or the poems you wanted and deliver that curriculum so that outcomes were met. This was the goal of the Australian School. There was freedom. Uh, there was um, a lot of respect for diversity. Um, I found a lot of trust in the teacher. I think some of these elements need to happen. But it is not to say that all of these systems were perfect or ideal. There were pitfalls and there were downfalls. So you might find too much freedom or you might find teachers who are not quite there, being given this kind of task, which required a lot more in terms of learning or education, which they did not have. And therefore, uh, there were flaws in that, in that uh, uh, system. Um, there could also be lack of motivation. 
that was one of the uh, big ones so you'll find that with a lot of resources and a lot of uh, a wonderful opportunities sitting there the children themselves often in those countries are not a hundred percent um, uh, you know there in terms of appreciating what they have in terms of giving their best which you might find in countries like India or developing countries where children appreciate what is happening and they work extremely hard because they are very goal oriented. So that kind of takes a back seat in some of those places. So I would say that for a country like India you need to be eclectic in what you choose. You want to go a safe uh, thinking curriculum one that encourages inquiry and exploration, one that differentiates children and makes sure that you know, you're not putting all of them into one box and giving them a one-size-fits-all kind of curriculum. Uh, those are some of, the, um, some of the traits of education from those countries that I would uh, bring into the Indian curriculum. So when I do workshops and when I write my books, I'm aware of this and I try my best to put these traits into, uh, into Indian education. It is not difficult, it's definitely not impossible, but looking at the size of India, looking at the complexity, looking at the plurality of India, uh, these, it's, it seems quite formidable, you know, trying to do this for everyone. But then I believe that solutions always are part of the problem in the sense that you'll find your solution sitting in the complexity, in the plurality. And I think all we need to do is to tap into that, adapt rather than adopt curricula from other countries, um, understand what our aspirations and our philosophy is, and I think go with it. And I think we'll get there. Okay.